All right, today we're going to talk a little bit about food chains and how water pollution can actually affect certain food chains. Okay, but first of all, I need to know what you had for lunch today. What did you have for lunch today? Chicken sandwich. A chicken sandwich. And what did that chicken need in order to grow? Grain. Grain. And that grain needed something to grow. What did it need? What did it need to grow? Like, what do plants need to grow, do you think? Water, Water and sunlight, things like that. Now, what did you have for lunch? Pizza. Pizza. And what was on that pizza? Pepperoni. Pepperoni. Where'd that pepperoni come from, do you think? A pig, and what did that pig need to eat to grow? Apples. And ap apples and things like that. And what did apples and the grain and the things that the pig need to grow? They need sunlight and water. Sunlight and water. Now, what is that when other things eat something else and that eats something else and that needs something else to grow? What is that called? Food chain. It's called a food chain, right? Mm -hmm. So I have an example of a food chain here. Now, I know it doesn't exactly look like a food chain, but what I have here, and we're going to be talking about water pollution in a food chain, so this is an aquatic food chain. So what I mean by that is I have some plankton, okay? And then what animal might eat plankton? Anchovies. Anchovies, a different kind of fish, right? So a fish might eat plankton. So we have anchovies. And what, what's something that might eat anchovies? Tuna. Tuna, a bigger fish like a tuna might eat anchovies. And what eats tuna? Swordfish, shark. Swordfish and sharks, bigger predators like that, right? Okay, and what eats maybe shark or swordfish? Us. We do, right? So we're at the top of that food chain, aren't we? So if we're going to eat something like a swordfish or a shark, do we need to worry about the things that it's eating too? Yes. Yeah, we probably do because what it eats, we're actually going to end up eating ourselves, right? So we're going to do a little demonstration here with a food chain. So what I've actually done in this food chain is I've actually treated a couple of the plankton with some sodium hydroxide. Now what sodium hydroxide is is a base. And we have an indicator solution here that will indicate if we have a base or not in these containers. And if we have a base, it's actually going to turn a bright pink color. Okay, and that's going to act as our contamination in this food chain. So Lillian, I want you to go ahead and take one drop into each of those bottom rows of the plankton down there. Okay, so we just added our indicator solution to our tent and plankton down there, and it really looks like that two of our plankton actually were contaminated with some sort of some sort of contamination. What kinds of water pollution could it be? What could they have been contaminated with? Uh, oil. Like oil or something like that. It could be some sort of chemical, like mercury got into the system, right? We talk about mercury being in our fish that we eat a lot. And so that can actually move on up in a food chain. So we said that anchovies or other fish will actually eat plankton. So we have five anchovies. We had 10 plankton. So it's possible that out of those five anchovies, at least one of them may have eaten from the contaminated plankton, right, and moved it up another level in the food chain. It's also possible that they didn't eat from the contaminated plankton and they're perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and do this again where we add our indicator solution and let's see if any of our anchovies got contaminated as well. So go ahead and start on that row of anchovies. All right, so again, it could have turned out any number of ways, but how it turned out was three of our five anchovies were contaminated. Okay, so let's move on up the food chain. Um, all right, so we have our tuna, right? So we have three tuna, okay? Again, it's possible that of those three tuna, they ate from the anchovies that weren't contaminated at all. It's also possible that they ate from the ones that were contaminated, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Why don't you go ahead and start with the tuna and let's see what we've got there. Okay, so one of our tuna was contaminated, right? All right, now we could stop there, right? We have another food level of the food chain to go up to our sharks or our swordfish, but we could even stop here because a lot of us eat tuna when we eat fish, okay? And so, now, this tuna got contaminated probably because it ate an anchovy, but did it directly eat the original plankton that was contaminated? It didn't. It didn't, right? There was a step in between with the anchovy. So that contamination moved from the lowest level of the food chain up to the next level, all the way up to our tuna. So the tuna didn't actually have to eat the contaminated plankton in order for it to be contaminated. So we could easily be eating this piece of tuna you know, hopefully we got one that wasn't contaminated, but you don't know. There's, it's very hard for us to know that. And that's why it's really important to study that and to, that we understand that water pollution can actually move through a food chain. But we still have even another level that we want to go to. We want to eat 
something that ate some of this tuna. So let's take a look at that, okay? So over here we have two sharks, all right? And so again, we're gonna take our indicator solution and we're gonna see out of our two sharks that we're able to eat from these three tuna if any one of those were contaminated. Okay, so now one of our sharks was contaminated, okay? Now again, we're still not quite at the top of the food chain because that's us, right? We're the ones that are gonna be eating this. So which one would you rather eat? Yeah, we wanna eat this one, right? But sometimes, again, it's really hard to know when you're eating food and fish, especially at a restaurant or you're getting it from the store, whether it's been contaminated. So it's really important that we know where our food comes from, what's going on in those locations, okay? So is there a lot of water pollution going on in those, in those locations and how that can affect it? So this whole idea of the fact that, well, it's just a plankton that's contaminated, that's not going to affect me. Well, really, it can, right? It really can move up through that whole food chain, and it really can have a big effect on us as well.